Alright, so welcome back to part two. I'd like you to turn your paper over. We're going to make a graphic organizer of motion. And you're going, to need a, you're going to need a full sheet of paper for this. So at the very top, let's write motion. Now motion can be split into two categories here. Category one is where we have no acceleration. And category two is where we do have acceleration. So when the acceleration is zero, we have a name for that. We call it equilibrium. And when the acceleration is not zero, that means the object is accelerating. And we call this non-equilibrium. Non-equilibrium. Equilibrium occurs when the net force acting on an object is zero. And that leads to two situations. If an object is at rest, that means that the object will stay at rest. But if the object is moving, or I'll say if the object is in motion, then that leads to a situation where the object stays in motion with the same speed and direction. Same speed and direction. Okay, so, so far so good. Now, when we have non-equilibrium, that's when there is a net force acting on the object. So that means that the forces are not balanced. We could add in here equilibrium, we could show, we could say balance forces over here. And so over here we would have unbalanced forces. And again with this there are two situations. Situation when an object is at rest. And what will be happening in this situation is that the object will accelerate. It accelerates from rest. That would be like having a soccer ball sitting there and then your foot comes along and kicks it. As soon as your foot was exerting a force on it, the soccer ball was no longer in equilibrium, it was accelerating. And as soon as it left your foot, it was going off with that new velocity. And just like before, over here we had in motion. So over here on the right we also have in motion. If an object is in motion, there are three possibilities for this. And you know what I'm going to do? Um, just to make sure that we have enough room for all these examples. Um, I'm going to go to a third page here. So we'll add a page. And we're going to continue where this was in motion. All right, we have three things that can happen here. The first is that an object that's experiencing an unbalanced force can get faster. So for example, if we have a surface with an object sitting on it, and let's say it's already moving, so we're going to label it V, little arrow. And then we're going to come and we're going to exert a force on it. We'll call that label that F. The force pushing on the object in the direction the object is moving is going to cause that object to accelerate. So I'm going to put another vector here called acceleration. 
Now there are three different vectors here representing three totally different things. The V vector is showing which direction and how fast the object is moving. The force vector is showing the push or pull acting on that object. And the acceleration vector is showing how the velocity is changing as a result. And a little flashback from our last unit, when you have velocity vector and it's getting faster, you will show the acceleration pointing in the same direction as that velocity grows. The other situation is that the object could be getting slower. So we'll draw a similar situation. We have an object. Could be, for example, the stone for the curling. We have it moving to the right, velocity to the right, just like before. But this time, there's going to be a force that's pointing in the opposite direction. And that would cause it to slow down. I can add another vector in here. That's my acceleration vector. Because the object is moving to the right, but getting slower as a result of the force, so the acceleration is to the left. I want to point out something here. What I'd like to point out is that the acceleration and the force vectors point in the same direction always. Because it is, it is the force that causes that acceleration. So that's worth putting a little star underneath here. We can say that acceleration is in the same direction as the net force. Always. Force causes acceleration. The third example over here, we haven't looked at that yet. This is where the object could simply be changing direction only. No change in speed. And we can draw an example of that. Here's our object. We have it moving to the right like before. But we're going to have a force come in from the side. This is a little bit difficult to draw. Force hitting it from the side. So maybe we should add in there from the side. And what that's going to do is it's going to cause this to change direction. So if we were going to if we're going to label the acceleration vector, we would put in a little acceleration like that. And just like before, the force vector and the acceleration vector are going to be pointing in the same direction. And just a little FYI here, when an object is changing its direction only without having any change in speed, we call that centripetal acceleration. Maybe you've heard that term before. It's a special kind of acceleration that doesn't that involves no change in speed, just a change in direction. So, for example, things that are moving around in a circle, like a car going in a circle. Okay, so how does this all relate to curling? Well, I don't know what you know about curling. I didn't know much until I looked at it on Wikipedia today. The goal is to get it in what's called the house. And the house is the bullseye at the end. So here's a picture of the house. And uh, it's a long track as you've seen probably on, on video. It's kind of like a bowling alley and the, and the idea it's a long lane. And you, uh, as you saw Jenny do, you push it down. Um, so the goal is to get it as much as close to the house as possible. And as far as some names here, why do they call it curling? Well, kind of interestingly, if we're going to look at a top-down view of this, um, so top-down view, as this is moving along, I'm going to draw it velocity like this. Uh, it has a tendency to not go in a straight line. It has a tendency to curl to the right or maybe to curl to the left. Uh, and this is due to the fact that there is some friction between the stone and the, and the ice. And almost always the stone begins to rotate a little bit as it's rolling along. And as it rotates, you get kind of the same effect as with the, uh, a curveball in baseball. When you put a spin on it, it makes it curve. And that's because one side of this stone is moving faster against the ice than the other. And so it's experiencing a little bit, um, a little bit more friction. So that's the little FYI there. 
Um, the third thing that's kind of interesting is about the sweepers. What an interesting job. The sweeper's job is to reduce the friction by melting the top layer of ice in front of the stone. And if you want to melt ice, you can apply friction to it. And they're actually pushing hard into the ice to get the top surface to melt. And that's, that melting is a combination of some of the friction, which creates heat, and also the pressure that they're applying to it. And so if it starts to curl a little bit out of the way, they can try to reduce the friction to eliminate or to reduce the amount of curling to try to allow it to go um, as straight as possible. And so that's the idea. And also if they want to go farther, they can also reduce the friction in that way. They can't make it go any faster by reducing friction. The maximum speed it will ever have is the speed it has right when it leaves the curler's hand. So let's take a look at um, at specifically how the idea of net force and equilibrium apply. So what we're going to do here is we're going to draw um, draw the um, the sheet, and um, we're, we're going to draw over here a um, stone that's being pushed. We'll draw the person pushing it. So maybe we can. Um, Bring back Jenny here. All right. And um, let's label some things here. And pay attention to the way I'm doing this, because this is what I expect for you guys to learn how to do, too. We're using a velocity vector to indicate the direction it's going. We are using a force vector to indicate the direction of the force that she's applying to it. And we're using an acceleration vector to indicate the change in motion of it. So there is a certain period at which she gets it moving. So I'm going to draw a dotted line here. This is kind of like ticker tape. It's kind of like Mission to Mars. There's an initial period during which there is acceleration. As long as she's pushing on it, it will accelerate, getting faster. And so this would be the period here of non-equilibrium. because it is getting faster. But then there's a moment when she lets go of it. And as soon as she lets go of it, then it is, um, it's coasting. So it's still traveling with that same velocity. Well, sorry, still it starts off with the initial velocity that it had when leaving her hand. But now we're going to assume frictionless ice for, for a moment here. We're going to assume then there's no more acceleration. And there's also no more force acting on it because she has to let go of it. And it's going to be moving. It's going to be making its way down, further down, still moving with velocity. If there's no friction, it will be moving with the exact same velocity. So let's consider. Um, this a case of equilibrium. We are for the moment re ignoring the effect of any friction. And we can say that this is, I'm going to say nearly, nearly constant velocity. Because there is some opposing friction. All right, now these things keep going until there comes a moment when they hit another one at the end. And I will draw this one in red. This would be the opposite teams. So in comes the stone hitting another stone that is at rest. And that we can identify right here as being a third stage. A stage, again, of non-equilibrium because now there's going to be a force acting on this stone. So this is the final final part of this. When the stone hits the red stone, we're going to have forces present. And let's draw like this. I'm going to draw a force, and we're going to label this, and I'm going to put numbers 1 and 2. So first, this is the force of 1 on 2. But there is a reaction force of 2 pushing back on 1. So this is force of 2 on 1. 
And uh, this force of two acting back on one is what can make the incoming stone stop. And it can make the stone that was sitting here move. And this involves what we might call a transfer of momentum. All right, but during this collision time, that's another case of non-equilibrium. So if I were going to do this here in maybe blue, there's this period right in here during the collision that is non-equilibrium. Non-equilibrium during the time of collision. And, um, and so that's going to cause the deceleration of the brown one and the acceleration of the red one. And if we were going to draw a, an acceleration vector, kind of keeping with what we, had done, what we had done earlier, acceleration was to the right when it was being pushed. Acceleration was zero when it was just gliding along. And when it hits number two, it's going to experience an acceleration to the left causing it to decelerate. Okay, so we see three examples here. Non-equilibrium as it's being accelerated, equilibrium as it goes with constant velocity, and non-equilibrium as it hits one of, the other, um, one of the other stones. So what I'd like you to do now is answer the two uh, video reflection questions. There's a multiple choice and there's a free response. And I'll see you guys in class.